Hi, you're listening to Cat Tales, and I'm Cat. It's been 50 years since German guitar virtuoso Michael Schenker made his recording debut with the Scorpions at the tender age of 16. From the start, it was obvious he was playing at a level that was way beyond many of his contemporaries, a little detail that did not go unnoticed by UK rockers UFO, who were quick to poach him. Michael has influenced an entire generation of guitar players who defined the 1980s heavy metal era from Slash and Randy Rhodes to Kirk Hammett. He was also asked to join Ozzy Osbourne and auditioned for Aerosmith. Now he's back with the Michael Schenker group and his latest release, Immortality, and we chat about his career, who influences him, and why he still loves the first song he ever wrote. This is the one with Michael Schenker. So the first thing to say then, Michael, is welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. No problem at all. It's wonderful to speak to somebody who has got your pedigree. You've been in the music industry for 50 years and you're still making fabulous music. How have you managed to do that? Well, it's, you know, I I, I am a kid in the sandbox. Um, I I just play and uh, I I don't... um, compete i don't compare i i i don't look for fame or success or you know i just i'm just fascinated with uh, putting three notes together creating goose pimples and and just be very cre- recreational you know with, with my with my art and uh, and so i kind of very early uh, in my life discovered that um, there is an inner spring, uh, an infinite inner spring of creativity, um, which is endless. Um, And and so my focus has been, you know, since I started actually when I was 15, Mm. step by step, by the time I was 18, I I never listened to music anymore. And, uh, and so I, I never take anything from the trend uh, uh, um, over all these years. Um, in fact, if anything, I created a trend because, you know, in the 80s, um, many guitarists copied my, 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 guitar, my uh, guitar style. And, uh, yeah, and, and, and as, a, as, a, as a result of that, um, you know, I, I developed going within myself and uh, opening up myself uh, for the world to to come up with uh, some fresh stuff um, yeah it 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 keeps me you know it keeps me Michael Schenker mm-hmm. and and so if everybody would always just take from the trend uh, the trend uh, and, and and no freshness comes in uh, it, the the, uh, rock, the rock trend probably would have died a long time ago, but there are some people like me who 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 do inject freshness into the trend, and and you know the musicians that have copied me in the eighties they know that and and they take bits and pieces of 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 what you know I come up with. Um, mm. Um, uh, as 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 fresh fresh ideas because I only take from the inside, you know I I inject freshness to the trend and and uh, and so so the trend keeps on going much longer than it uh, would have been because uh, if everybody takes from the trend, um, it, it it just dies uh, yeah. uh, very quickly. And, uh, you know, and, and so you, you have to put fresh water <laughs> into mm-hmm. the ditch in order to, to keep things uh, uh, inspired. And, yeah. and, 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 uh, and so as a result of that, you know, I, I actually, the, the, um, the boss of, of, of uh, Nuclear Blast, um, Marco Steiger, um, he said to me, that Michael, if he wouldn't have been, he would have never been. And, and 
he would have never started trash metal and trash metal would have never existed. And I went, what? You know, because I, mm-hmm. I never really knew that, that I had so many uh, fans, uh, famous musicians, uh, fan, fans uh, yeah. like Slash and, and Kirk Hammett, et cetera, et cetera, that, uh, you know, I, I only found out about all of this later in my life because I'm a kid in the sandbox. I, I don't really even research anything. I have no expectations. And, and so, therefore, I was very overwhelmed in the 90s when I found out that, that uh, you know, all these uh, you know that I had so many fans. Yeah, and, and, uh, amazing. And, and yeah, and, and then uh, I did Australian interviews, and there was a couple. They said the same thing as Marcus Steiger that uh, if I wouldn't have been that uh, trash metal and all the other metals would have never developed. You know, and I went, what? You know, and so <laughs> it was just like you know, as I get older. And get information because I never, I never really go on the internet and 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 dig for for information about myself or as you know whatever. I, I just yeah. I just love to be to be myself oh. and 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 just have fun, you know. And, and, oh, and, that's brilliant! And, and, I and that, that that is all I do. And and so everything else that comes out of that, it's a. Uh, uh, icing on the cake, you know, and, and so like, you know, many people uh, take from the trend and uh, maybe they go for fame and they want a piece of the pie of, of stereotype commercial, uh, good, well-selling uh, music, it's, uh, or you go within yourself and, and uh, be an artist and create, um, you know, without expectation mm. and just have fun. That's amazing. I love the fact that you've shielded yourself from what others are doing. I think it sounds to me, Michael, that that's been a really important um, part of that jigsaw for you to make sure that you do, um, you know, take what you're creating yourself rather than being influenced by others. Absolutely. But, you know, of course, you know, um, everybody um, uh, starts at some point. I started when I was nine. And of course, you have to get... You know, like like I was uh, copying uh, hit parade music when I was nine and when I was eleven. I you know I I joined the first band and and then when when I was uh, uh, around fourteen years old, I you know discovered that uh, well actually people like Tony Iommi and 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 you know and actually uh, the sixties guitarists you know the they were also original and, and had so much to give um, uh, as, a, as individuals um, mm. that was not so much. Um, you know, if it's like the 80s. It's like a watered down 70s. And, and they made it very commercial and it was all about making money. Yeah. And, and, and so, you know, um, yes, you're right. It, it it is um, absolutely important to me. Yeah, it sounds also. I mean, your your playing is so incredible. Let's be honest about that. And, and it isn't a surprise to me that you have influenced so many great players. You know, your, your slashes of the world. It sounds to me like you're quite surprised about that. But do you consciously work out what you're going to play, or do you actually just improvise in certain circumstances? It, 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 it comes in all ways, you know, it, it's like sometimes it depends on the song. It depends if it's like a slow song. Usually, you know, with UFO, I, I most most songs uh, started as instrumentals. And then Phil Mock would hear a piece and said, wow, Michael, this is great. Can you just take the guitar, lead guitar away and just give me the, the, the rough chords so I can do something to it? And so... You know, uh, songs like Balladonna and, and Doctor Doctor, et cetera, et cetera, instrumentals uh, are all basically um, written on lead guitar, uh, which is an instrumental. And then um, maybe I put another lead break in there, which is completely improvised, you know, and, and then the, the more rocky stuff, I, I, I usually just 
improvise, you know, I, I, I just out of nowhere. And especially like rock bottom, you know, when I do the middle part and and uh, go on an adventure, uh, it's like a little bit kind of sometimes it goes down well, sometimes it's not so good. But <laughs> but you, you, you don't fear um, that maybe it, it doesn't work out as well. But, you know, I, I do go on 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 adventures not knowing at all on stage what i'm going to be doing and i do that in the studio too and so it, it's a mixture of things depending on 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 you know what kind of a song it is yeah and and i suppose if you give yourself the freedom to express whatever's coming from within it almost takes you on an on a uh let's say an untrodden path doesn't it it surpri- it could surprise you what comes out rather yeah. than restraining yourself yeah yeah absolutely and, and and when we you know and especially in rock bottom when i go on an adventure in the middle of the um you know the, I, I always keep the, the the basics of rock bottom and, and and all the you know the melodies that are important that people know from strangers in the night etc cetera, etc cetera. and uh, when i go on adventure you know it's a risk and, and i love i love that risk because at that point i'm in the now and nothing else exists and 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 i just go for it yeah and like i said sometimes it, it's better sometimes it's not as good as it was be- the day before uh, but but uh, it is always fun yeah. to 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 be a little bit kind of not knowing what's going to happen. That's brilliant. And I like the idea of you being in the now and the present because so often we're looking at what's to come, aren't we? Or we're worried about the next thing or we've got everything going on. And the only way to be really alive is actually in that moment, isn't it? It sounds to me like you've managed to capture that. Absolutely. Very, very important. The now is, for me, the most important thing. Yeah, I can see that. The other thing that um, that strikes me in our conversation here, Michael, is that, you know, you're very much your own person. And I know this has come out through your career where you have obviously played with bands. You've got Scorpions and UFO and you, you have the opportunity to play with Ozzy. Um, has it been important to you to maintain your solo career rather than being part of a band? I know you auditioned for Aerosmith, for example. They wouldn't necessarily allow you the same kind of freedom, I'm assuming. Absolutely. And, and that's, you know, I love Ozzy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love Ozzy. And, and, and I was his first choice, you know, Deep Purple as well, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So many fill in it you know, asked me to play with them. But, you know, when I actually got to Strangers of the Night, I, I realized that I had, um, you know, developed in, you know, my first step um, to the point that uh, I was, uh, um, I, I, I wanted to move forward. And actually, I, I wrote, the you know, a, a song when I was, uh, 21 and 76 lights out it became a hit i got scared i ran away and and uh, because i thought the music business expected me now to to write hits you know mm. and uh, um but pete way he persuaded me to get back to, you know to come back and we did obsession and then um so with with strangers in the night and then you know i left and then um, uh Rudolf, my brother from the scorpions he he discovered, you know, found out that 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 I was available. They had a problem with Matthias uh, with the Love Drive album, which they asked me, you know, to 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 uh, help them, and and so so I did, and uh, I I uh, made sure I I had a contract with them for the Love Drive album, um, you know, just just for the, you know, there should have been a picture on the on the on the cover uh you know love drive um opened the doors for america for the scorpions i did that for rudolf and for for klaus mainly Mm -hmm. and and so once that was done they were so happy with the result they wanted to keep me and and they were very very disappointed when they could not keep me because i at that point UFO and Scorpions, they were running for fame and for success and money, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I never had an interest in chasing something that I was not interested in. If I would have stayed with UFO, 
it would have been one of the biggest bands in the world, you know, but mm. that was not my point, you know. My point was that uh, I had to follow my own vision. My, my vision was in the middle years to experiment as an artist and, and do the things I couldn't have done with Ozzy. And that's why I said no, um, you know, because I, I'm not going to copy um, you know, what they had done before. I'm not a copy person and, and I would never enjoy that. And even though it was tempting, you know, uh, selling out, I, I never did. I, mm. I was so, I was so actually fortunate that I, you know, that actually the, the desire to, to, to follow my own vision was so strong that I, I carried on. And, and so, in the middle years, I, I became the experimental artist. I did, I mean, so many albums uh, that people might not even know about uh, under Michael Schenker. And I did acoustic instrumental, electric instrumentals and, and uh, you know, cover versions and all sorts of things. And, yeah. then, and then I came to the point around 2008, you know, when I, when I realized that uh, I, I was fulfilled with, with that stuff and, and that I had done everything I wanted to do. So I was complete. And at that point, it actually, um, um, I went back to when I was 16, 18, 20. You know, I started to, um, you know, be back to, you know, I love Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple and, and, and Black Sabbath, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, and Leslie West and, 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 you know, all of that. And, and so, but, but now I, I, I started with Gary Barden in the midst of beauty in 2008. And, and that was the beginning of my return to, uh, you know, leave the experimental, uh, the extreme experimental uh, Michael Schenker uh, done. Everything was done. And, and so I uh, somehow I, I had the desire to go back to where I was when I was 16, 18, 20, and that's what I did. And, 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 you know, that was, I mean, <laughs> I, I just, I just uh, went like uh, step by step um, um, all the way to, you know, having the, the, the Michael Schenker group with Simon Phillips and Mo Foster from Jeff Beck and, and then MSG um, um, with Cozy Powell and Paul Raymond and Chris Glenn, etc., and and then there was even the Macaulay Schenker group, you know, that yeah. that that was, I must say, everything is actually Michael Schenker group, you know, because yeah. everything starts with Michael Schenker, and and so even uh, you know, I gave Robin the M to keep the MSG logo. I didn't care if I had the first M or not, but it was. Um, may call it Schenker Group, but it actually was a Michael Schenker Group. But uh, it's good to have those uh, categories of those different names. To, uh, it helps me, it helps the fans to understand uh, which Michael Schenker Group are we talking about here. Yeah. And, and because I had so many lineups and, uh, and then I had Michael Schenker's Temple of Rock, which was also Michael Schenker Group, but it was a subtitle, you know, yeah. uh, Michael, Temple of Rock is a subtitle that tells you, ah, that is with, uh, with uh, uh, Herman Rebel, Francis Buchholz from the Scorpions, and Dukey White from Rainbow, and then there was a Michael Schenker Fest, which uh, says that, uh, um, that this is uh, with the original four singers from the 80s um, yeah. uh, to my original compositions. And so, but that is also Michael Schenker group, but the, it has got that, that subtitle, uh, Michael Schenker Fest. Yeah. And so, you know, and now I'm, I'm at the uh, Michael Schenker 50th anniversary immortal, and, and uh, it, it's, it's, it's also Michael Schenker group. Yes, yeah. uh, because everything I do is Michael Schenker yeah. group. It's just different members it you know? is and, isn't it it's you and friends yeah. isn't it you bring in all the, the the right people at the right time to deliver what your vision is in the music that's how I see it well it, 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 everything that in my life is based on circumstances like I said I live in the now yeah. and I deal with what's going on right now and based on the circumstances I am in um, at that point um, 
you know, things come out of nowhere. I mean, it, it everything always just develops mm-hmm. based on circumstances. Uh, and and it's not, you know, like a big master plan or anything. Yeah. Because I, I go by now and look around and see in the now what I need to do now. Yeah. Amazing. And that's great. I think that it also sounds to me like the right things are coming to you at the right time to take you on the journey that you need to go. Um, I think that's very special because you're being led by, let's say, the universe or whoever. And, and it's actually, it's working for you, isn't it? It's, it's taken you in some fabulous places. It's taken you to some great journeys and made some fabulous people that you can now call upon as friends, but also colleagues to play in your band. I, I, I am absolutely guided by something beyond myself. Yeah, I can see that. That's incredible. And it sounds like it's also materialising from the, you know, from the inside. Was that where your album, your new, let's talk about your new album, Immortal. Is that where your title comes from? Because that is about mortality, immortality, the bigger picture. Tell me where the title came from. Yeah, yeah, the title, <laughs> funny the funny, the title, the way it came up was like I told you the story about Marco Steiger uh-huh. um, and, and um, you know, who said that, that he would have never been. So actually the title came from Nuclear Blast, from, 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 from uh, um, I, don't, I don't know who actually specifically came up with the title, uh, but I guess it was an internal decision of Nuclear Blast and uh, and because they are fans, I mean, most musicians on Nuclear Blast are Michael Schenker fans. Yeah. And, 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 and actually, the people who work at uh, Nuclear Blast, um, in Germany especially, they are Michael Schenker fans. And so I, they actually decided that Immortal, uh, for them as, as a fan and, and, and following my whole career, um, would be an appropriate uh, title.
Hi, this is Michael Schenker, and you're listening to Cat Tales. Hmm. I think it is. And it, it sort of summarises everything that you are for me. I mean, I've I've listened to the whole thing and it takes you on that journey of different styles. And, you know, you've had, got the hard rock in there, the, the softer rock, the thrash bit. It, it feels a little bit like it's a summary of everything that you've done. Yeah, it's, it's all me, you know. I mean, it's like, um, um, you know, where I go to take... Um, my, my inspiration from the inside, um, you know, I, I, I sometimes feel like my, my brain is like a clock, you know, like a filing system. It ticks and ticks and ticks and then and, and, and it goes around like a clock. And then eventually um, uh, I, I, I end up to where I started. And, uh, and, and so that's why all of a sudden those desires uh, and and the way of doing things, um, bringing me back to being 16, um, 18, 20, you know, and I'm, I'm a really like metal fan. If you, if you listen to UFO, you can hear so much metal, but yeah. it got watered down by Phil Mock's voice, but, uh, and, and it made it a very interesting combination. I mean, it was a very great uh, chemistry, you know, uh, uh, but it, it created some kind of uh, something very interesting. Yeah. Um, if, if you take my, if you take Phil Mock's voice away, you can hear a lot of, uh, you know, who I, who I am, you know, and yeah. what I enjoy. And like I said, I, I am an Aussie uh, fan and uh, uh, Tony Iommi and, and all of those, uh, Jimmy Page, Jeff Beck, and, and those are the guys you know, that that um, inspired me and, yeah. and letting me know that, that, and especially when the distortion was discovered, um, that was the key when I was around 14 years old, when I turned up, uh, 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 teamed up with uh, Klaus Meiner, mm-hmm. as, uh, with Copernicus, and, and, and we played Zap, uh, Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, and we copied all you know, Rory Gallagher and all of that. Yeah. And, uh, and so, so that, that's my roots, you know. I mean, that's my passion, you know. Traumatic, traumatic music. Traumatic, but with that um, distortion now, um, uh, 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 together, you, the, 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 the single string becomes like a combination lock. I mean, you, you hit a note, and because of the distortion, you, it can it can stay forever unless uh-huh. you make a decision to break it up, mm-hmm. or hit it again, or put vibrato in it, or you know, it's a combination lock. You can make that one note come across in so many different ways just one single note yeah. um, uh, depends on on how you, you know you understand what you can do with it and you can bend it and you can create the guitar is the best uh, instrument for for uh, a, a complete uh, for uh, for uh, emotional expressions in in all directions happy mm. sweet uh, traumatic sad um, it, it's all there um, because of you can bend strings, um, you know, in comparison to an acoustic guitar, you, you can't, you're actually limited. You don't have the distortion. You don't yeah. have, um, you know, the strings are so hard that you can't really bend them, even yeah. though you can if you want. Uh, but, uh, you know, but it doesn't sing like an electric uh, guitar with a, with a distortion. So the singing part, of 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 that is it's it's so important yes i can i can hear that and of course the flying v's also been part of your life hasn't it really so that's been your signature um guitar really hasn't it well the flying v came to me i never looked for it you know so i'm not i'm not the guy who goes uh you know window shopping for guitars and says oh this is a (laughs) this is a, a nice looking guitar I I don't look into I don't look at nice looking guitars. It's all circumstances again. You yeah. know, I was put in a situation where I didn't have the guitar I was playing before available. Uh, I had to I had to do a a show with the Scorpions and uh, and and uh, my guitar was locked away. And so I had to use 
uh, another guitar, and and that was a Flying V. And when I actually played that Flying V, I quickly discovered that there was, I mean, other than than, than the combination between 50 Watt Marshall and 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 the V, but but there was something about the shape that put me that I discovered that uh, uh, that I could actually by putting it between my legs that I was able to have a stable guitar rather than a hanging flying around guitar like a stable guitar by locking it in between my legs and create a heavy vibrato and that was um, you know and things yeah. like that step by step um, and that's why I again based on circumstances it's never a reason for wanting to look like something, but it all creates its automatic icon. And so that, that crooked uh, posture on, on stage that I have with the Flying V has a purpose, and that is a, that's the important part. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can have a Flying V um, with somebody who does not know how to play, the flying V is just going to lie there and won't yeah. do anything. So <laughs> exactly. it's, all, it's always uh, who is behind it, you know. But Absolutely. for me, it was it was uh, it, it, the, the the flying V came to me and uh, and I discovered advantages. And if it works, don't fix it. Once you get you know, once you have discovered certain things, uh, then you want to keep them, especially if they work and have a great effect. And so I, I you know, I, I just basically um, um, created um, not just the guitar itself, but my posture that I had to use in order to do what I wanted to do, mm. created a look that pe that was not known to the world, yeah. you know, and yeah. people were kind of, um, I don't know, very attracted to how I was standing there, but there was a reason for it. Yeah, yeah, and because the guitar is actually an extension of you, isn't it? It's not just an instrument; it has to be part of your body, doesn't it? To to really fully express what you're trying to do with it. Well, the guitar became, mm -hmm. uh, especially the Flying V, became part of my body because, like I said, I discovered uh, some uh, really important things uh, for the playing, uh, like heavy vibrato, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I explained that to Kirk, and he said, "Really? Mm -hmm. Wow! I don't, that's amazing!" <laughs> and 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 so people don't really know why I stand on stage like that and hmm. and but you know like you said it's it's uh, you develop something and the circumstances of the development uh, create some kind of a look yeah that 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 then later became an icon and and of course and the flying bee became you know an extension of yeah. my body like you said uh, mm. because of all the details included I, t I totally see that and and I also hear that you know with your new album Immortal it's all in there isn't it I'll tell you what I really find fascinating with the album Michael though is the very first song you wrote in search of the peace of mind that's on there again isn't it of course the Scorpions did it with the on the their debut album but it's back on your album now. Why have you resurrected it? Ah, very, very important. You know, it was the first note I ever recorded. I mean, it was the first time I made a record with the Scorpions' Lonesome Crow. And, uh, and, and, and Michael Foss, actually, and, and I wrote that song, by the way. I wrote the music in my mother's kitchen all by myself. There was oh, nobody wow. there. <gasps> but the Scorpions credited themselves for it. I was 15. They were 21. They were already using me. They mm. were already taking advantage and, and, and wanting to be part of it. But nobody had anything to do with the music because yeah. I wrote it all by myself. Rudolf, my brother, can't even play it because it involves double picking. It was actually already quite a... a, a um, uh, what, do, what what's the word for it? Uh, a, a comp it was actually a, a, a quite a, a, a composition for a 15 year old. Yeah. Plus, the thing that uh, that uh, it was called "In Search of the Peace of Mind" became the theme of my life anyway. 
uh, which is very ironic and and uh, you know looking for fulfillment contentment for peace etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, it, it's so weird mm. that 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 became the title of my very first composition it's almost like predestined and mm. and also there was a solo on it which i played as a 15 year old i would never change a note I mean, like Stairway to Heaven or, or the theme of the imaginary Western, you know, it's so perfect. Uh, it happens sometimes that, that something is so perfect, you, you would never change a note. And, and I have no clue where that lead play came from, because you can hear on Lonesome Crow, the Scorpions album that I... Um, am developing i am an amateur you know i'm learning but that solo was so perfect Amazing. i mean where, where on earth did it come from you know incredible and, and it, 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 yeah it was and and so and you know putting it all together oh and then michael Foss, you know he actually <laughs> he he sent me the original credits for Lonesome Crow, Scorpion's album, and it says Michael Schenker lyrics, Rudolf Schenker lyrics. Michael and Rudolf had zero knowledge of English. How could we have written any lyrics? So it was complete misinformation. It should have oh. said uh, music written by Michael Schenker and the lyrics by whoever. Yeah. You know, and, and so, so basically, this song... Um, for all of these reasons I just told you, um, is the, the start of, yeah. of, of, of the beginning of, of making my first record. And, uh, incredible. That's and, incredible. And, the Scorp and the Scorpions never made a record until I joined because they didn't even know how to write songs, you know. So mm. I, I actually wrote most of the music for Lonesome Crow, but I never got credited for it. And so, you know, being a 15-year-old oh. kid, uh, being taken advantage by 21 year old chasing fame and, and wanting to be like Elvis Presley or Rolling Stones, you know, they, mm. they understood and, and discovered my talent very easily and quickly and, uh, and, and, and so took advantage of that, uh, which I never knew because I don't look around. I, I you know, like I said before, I'm a kid in the sandbox. I just enjoy. Yeah. And so uh, all of these things pass by me. Uh, I only discovered this, all of that kind of stuff, um, only just, uh, you know, since actually 2015, when the Scorpions asked me to help them with the, with the, with the Scorpions box. And, and uh, that's when I discovered the, all the lies, you know, the whole love drive story was a complete lie. And, uh, and, 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 and I had to decline to help them with that um, because I was so disappointed. I always supported my brother Rudolf, you know, being so successful uh, with the Scorpions. I always said more power to Rudolf and Klaus and, and so on. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, but, but um, somehow... Uh, oh, the, 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 the write up for the, for the, um, um, uh, Love Drive album was a complete lie. And, and I had to decline. And, and, and I, and, and, and you know, that opened a can of worms. What yeah. I discovered, what I discovered since 2015 is unbelievable. Oh. And, and, and I never knew any of those things before. And uh, that changed everything uh, um, with my relation to Rudolf and, and, and the Scorpions, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I also gave Phil Mark uh, the name UFO back. Um, you know, I owned 50% of it. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, and he came to Los Angeles asking me to refuel a UFO because, you know, he completely destroyed it. It was in, in 1993. And actually, at that year, uh, in that month, in one month, I got a phone. Call, I, I got, I got uh, Phil Mock showing up with his manager. Phil Mock was completely uh, 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 destroyed. Uh, not just UFO, but him. He mm. was a phobic. He was running away from people. He asked me, Michael. He actually begged me, Michael, please help me refuel UFO. And so 
that's how we ended up with Walk on Water. I insisted on doing this album with only the original uh, members because that's the chemistry of UFO, including Ron Everson. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had actually, before uh, Phil Mock showed up in Los Angeles with a manager asking me, I actually had a big record deal for MSG from Japan. And uh, so when, so, so in, in that month, Phil Mock shows up, Ruler, uh, uh, the Scorpions call me up and ask them to help them uh, to play Europe and Japan to help selling tickets. I guess they wanted to, to create an illusion that it was a reunion, but I was oh. only doing acoustic guitar, you know. But um, they always think like that. They, they always have some tricks under, up their sleeves how they can take advantage of me. And then at the same time, at the, in the same month, Deep Purple, I got an offer from Deep Purple oh. to join them. I was the first choice, oh. you know, when they looked for a guitarist. And, and uh, I actually was on tour with the Scorpions and asked them, hey, I just got a, you know, a, an offer to join Deep Purple. What do you think? I've also got Phil Mock waiting for me. Oh, and dear. What do you think In I demand. Should, what do you think I should do? And they said, like, wow, UFO is your band. And I actually totally agree, and I'm grateful for their suggestion, you know, because you can get tempted to, to, to uh, join, uh, um, you know, mm. especially being a fan of those bands. Yes. But I had to decline all of them. Oh. And so, so, so I ended up, you know, um, um, you know, going with Phil, but um, I said to him, you know, before you destroy this band again, if I put my energy into it, I want fifty percent of the name. Yeah. And and uh, so he 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 agreed, and we had a contract. And by the way, I also had a contract as a sixth member for the Love Drive album, and uh, there should have been a picture on the Love Drive album, and and, and there was never a picture, and and that is a breach of contract, you know, which I never, you know really um, go into or point out you know but but uh, uh, to them you know but it's wrong it's wrong it's it's very wrong and and i gave phil mark the name back after when he asked me in 2002 michael i need to carry on with ufo you know when i finally had enough of ufo and, and he said I, I need to earn money um, can i have the name ufo back i said phil you got my blessing. Here is the name back. You, I give it to you for free. Oh. And that was it. Do you know, it's it's a story that, that happens so often in the music industry, doesn't it, about things going on behind the scenes that you don't know about. And it's such a, it's such a sad state of affairs, isn't it? And it just brings me back to the title of your, your track, really, In Search of the Peace of Mind. And have you finally got your peace of mind then, Michael? When I'm alone and I am feeling blue, dreaming a dream of a world that's lovely and true. Faintly the dream of a true. And the wonderful world And no one will care As long as the world will turn
let you go because you're very very busy and I thank you so much for your time it's been fascinating and it's been wonderful thank you so much thank you very much bye bye you've been listening to cattails to listen again to this and other tales go to cattails.co.uk 